Before my mother got sick, she would lay in bed all day reading magazines with one hand floating in the air. It's relaxing, she would say. Her body is still here. Something is still here. I turn to my father. He is somewhere else. Maybe somewhere with her, their hands floating. Writing to me is getting to something that seems more honest. And it's funny because even if you're lying, I feel like you're always working to connect to an emotion that's more honest that maybe you can't express in a normal way. Maybe there's not a word to say, this is how I feel or this is what this experience was like. It's like when you hear a song, you know, sometimes you don't know what the words are. You feel it though. I've always wanted to be a writer. I was already doing the work of writing. I was already putting the hours into honing a craft. But when I realized that I wanted it to be more of a, of a career, I started thinking about how can I get into this, this literary business? Then I decided to move to New York, and then I decided to go to school. When you get into a program, when you get into these communities of writers, you see what everybody else is doing. So their opinions, take them in, but don't let them change who you are. You don't have to do things the way that they've been done. You don't have to do things the way that they're being done now. Writing has changed a lot. I tell people to stick to what they feel is right and what they want to express. You know, a lot of this is about battling yourself. My family's from Tampa, and I moved to New York City when I was 23. I worked at a hotel at night, and then one day I got a call from my mom, and she told me she was having open heart surgery, and that was really shocking. She had kept that from me. She didn't want me to worry about it. The surgery was fine. She had a quadruple bypass, and she was supposed to be released. In the middle of the night, we got a call and they said, you know, your mother, she's had a massive stroke. She probably won't recover. So just to let you know, she did recover. She fought really hard, but she never was able to speak again. She was never able to fully walk again. And it made me start thinking about what we are and who we are. If she's not the person I always knew her as, what is she now? Who is she? I decided to keep my apartment. I was living in Chinatown. I came back for a few months and helped out. I guess it was maybe a year and a half or two years later, in the middle of the night, my cat woke me up and I got out of bed, it freezing cold, February night, and I realized the whole building's on fire. There's no alarms going off. We didn't have any functioning alarms in the building. It was an old tenement. There's smoke everywhere. It's clear that I can't make it down the hall. I step out into the fire escape I walked out, I never walked back into my apartment. I lost everything. I lost all of my writing. I lost my stuff, I lost my cat. Almost the entire building burned down. Later I found out that two of my neighbors had passed that lived right below me, they were my age. It's a huge tragedy. How do you move forward? How do you keep creating art? Is art supposed to be happy and light? Well, no, it's not. I mean, art can do a lot of things. It can function in a lot of ways. And one of the ways I found it to function for me is by healing. I mean, it helped me heal. Life is really short and you have to just keep going and you have to do the things that make you happy and you have to take risks. But not everyone is gonna always agree with you. So you have to be kind of brave and just be willing to be wrong sometimes, be willing to fall sometimes, be willing to be put in danger sometimes. It's so important to try to find and build communities to support each other because it's a hard industry. There's a lot of rejection in writing. There's a lot of ambiguity. You're kind of going into this murky darkness and trying to light something and you don't know. You don't know where it's going to be. You don't know if it's going to equate to money ever. You don't know if it's going to equate to success. So it's important to have these people around you saying, you know, I really, I want to hear more. I like what you're saying and I want to hear more and here's what I have to say. Let's get together and talk about it. You can also build online networks. You can be introverted and still find your people.
I've definitely submitted pieces that weren't right. I've been rejected for fellowships. I've been rejected for grants. And each time, it's devastating. It's horrible. But most of the time, when I look back and I give it some time, I realize, you know, if I had done that thing, I wouldn't have been able to do this thing. So I think it's important to accept the rejection, understand that it's going to be a part of your writing career and your writing process, but then figure out how do you move forward? How do you take it and learn from it and then just keep going? I'm Jacqueline Marie Gallo. I'm a writer living in New York City.